I've been playing around with EV Next in Blender 4.2 and I have to say it's quite amazing for creating interior renders. I'll be showing you how to create this scene from scratch and it won't be a real-time tutorial since the video would be over two hours long. So let's get started. So I start with a cube. I go into edit mode. I make the cube three meters high and four meters long as well as four meters wide. Then I add loop cuts so that I can cut away a sliding door. In this case, I'm cutting two loop cuts over here because on the other side, I want to um, add in an extra room. So I'm just extruding this out and creating this sort of like hallway. At this point, I also decided to increase the length a bit so that I can fit my camera and the camera can capture the whole view. I add more loop cuts to cut out windows. And then once I have my loop cuts, I just delete those faces to, to create holes for the windows. With the base now complete, I decided to go ahead and work on the render settings. So I made sure to set EV as the render engine, ticked ray tracing, and I pretty much just changed the uh, resolution to 1 to 1 everywhere and precision to 1. Same with the fast GI um, approximation as well. So I went ahead now and added a solidify modifier so that we can give the walls a bit of thickness. And it will also prevent light leaks uh, when rendered with EV. Make sure to also check even thickness. I then went and separated out the floor, walls and ceiling so that it would be easier to work with. So just go P and separate by selection. I then went ahead and added a cube. Uh, this would be like the feature wall where you would have your TV installed. I then created a cube and added an array modifier to create a bunch of wood planks um, for the ceiling. It's just to create an interesting design. So in this case, I used the mirror modifier to create two main feature wood planks and then also one horizontally as well. Uh, and then I just uh, duplicated and added uh, a thinner wood frame and pretty much added an array modifier and just um, yeah filled the entire ceiling uh, with that wood plank. Before I added an array modifier, I just selected the four edges and just beveled them a bit by hitting Control B. And then added like two or three segments so that we get that nice little curvature. I then created a ceiling collection and I added all the ceiling elements to that collection. With the feature wall, I also beveled those edges as well so that it looks a little bit more realistic. I don't know why, but I decided to go a little fancy here and add an extra column. So at this point, the um, final interior and lounge room was done. So I just set up my camera, I set the focal length to about 25 millimeters, and I just position the camera in the best sort of angle that I can get. I then just added a plane that's supposed to serve as the ground outside. Once I was done, I then went ahead and beveled the entire interior room. So just selected the whole thing added a bevel modifier and since it looks a bit odd I just changed the type to absolute and it looked great. Now it was time to add the windows and I used Blender Kit to um, create the windows so I have the Blender Kit add-on installed with Blender 4.2. Um, if you want to know how to do that go ahead and click the link in the description and it will give you a guide on how to do that. So once I created the window I pretty much just um, duplicated a couple of times and uh, positioned them in the holes and I, I think I went into edit mode 
and um, changed um, the vertices to match the height and the width of each of the, the windows. I also went ahead and deleted this extra thing here, which I don't know what it does. Uh, there was also not enough of those um, uh, those wooden planks, those horizontal planks, I don't know what they, they're formally called. So I just manually went ahead and selected the vertices and just duplicated them a couple of times. So we get more of those square windows shapes. Then I just went ahead and duplicated to the other side. So select the entire window, shift D and move to the right. I also move the window um, handle to the other side as well. Just, it's not so important. I just wanted to make it a little bit more visually interesting to have it on opposite sides. I then went ahead and duplicated it and added the windows to the back of the lounge room as well. So I then went ahead and downloaded a HDRI Sky from polyhaven.com and I chose this resting place one. Back in Blender, I went into rendered mode. I then uh, went to the world settings, changed uh, the color to environment texture and loaded in that HDRI image. I then went to the shader editor and changed the uh, node to the world. I then added a texture coordinate, a mapping node and um, then rotated the Z axis to get sunlight coming into the, um, the room. Now I went ahead and downloaded a sliding door from Blender Grid using the add-on and simply just put it in place. Again, I went into edit mode and um, just uh, scaled it out so that it would fit the length. I didn't decide to scale it up all the way to the height because I wanted to add a plain window there. I found it quite interesting that there was a uh, widget available to open the sliding door. That'll be useful for animation. So now I went ahead and looked for a simple window using the Blender Grid add-on and I then just put it in place and pretty much the same thing, just scale it out until it fit. I added a little cube just below that, just to add a little bit of separation between the sliding door and the window. I just deleted that extra handle because it's not necessary. So now we have the sliding door completed. The material of the top window I didn't like much, so I just went ahead and just deleted all the windows. So, material time. In Blender Grid, we can use this second button at the top to select a uh, material. And then I just went ahead and added materials to everything, like the floors. So I looked for a wooden floor in this case. Once I found something, just um, click it. Same with the walls. Uh, I started with stucco and then I changed to plaster. And then I think I eventually decided to settle on a painted white wall. For the feature wall, I just put a, a marble texture. Um, I also wanted to UV unwrap it, um, just because I found the texture to be a little too big and I wanted to control the size of it more. I got some weird scaling issues and I realized that I needed, needed to apply the scale and then UV unwrap, which would give a, give a better unwrap. So I decided I at this point I didn't really like that marble texture so I chose another texture instead and this one looked a little bit better. At this point I decided um, to also texture the uh, ceiling as well so I just added painted wood materials. 
or painted plaster materials. And for those extra wood that's going uh, vertically along, I just put it in a shiny wood material. Now I went ahead and added some assets. So I went ahead and uh, grabbed a TV and I put it in place. I then added a sofa. In particular, there's a Taipei sofa, which is free. So I just added that in as well. So I just download and put it in place. And yeah, pretty much just duplicate that sofa three times just to arrange it around the lounge room. So Shift D, R, Z, 180 to rotate it uh, fully 180. Shift D again, R, Z, 90 to rotate it 90 degrees um, facing the camera. I also went ahead and added a coffee table. And also a shaggy carpet. And simply just position them in place. So now our living room is starting to come to life. I added a flower vase and I put it on the coffee table. Uh, at this point, I think I decided to change the color of the wall. So I think I put a white painted wall. I think it looked better. I wasn't happy with the HDRI lighting, so I ended up scrapping it and instead I added area lights inside um, everywhere where the windows were and I just um, sh uh, changed the size of the area lights to fit exactly the windows. I added a light blue color and made the power quite weak, so about 50 watts. To duplicate them, you, you don't have to do Shift D, you can also do Alt D as well, so that when you change the intensity of one light, it will affect every light as well. I also added an extra area light in the corridor area just to add a little bit of lighting um, in the corridor so it won't be fully pitch black because that looks a bit scary. I was trying to figure out why the glass was showing black um, while the outside was showing like daylight. Um, the real reason is because we didn't enable ray trace transmission in the material properties. I'll show how to do that later but for this specific example, I just went ahead and just deleted the glass itself, since we won't really need it. I then went ahead and added a sunlight, shift A light sun and just pointed it inside the living room and just angled it a bit, a little bit like a midday afternoon type of look. At this point, it's starting to look really great. It's starting to look a little bit photorealistic, um, almost like you'd render from cycles. So I just went ahead now and added all the extra stuff like chandeliers, shelves, plants, Things like that. Just to fill up the living room and make it look uh, a lot more lived in. Here I just uh, decided to add a, a little shelf. Um, I couldn't find a good one on Blender Grid, so I just manually modeled one myself.
I ended up just using uh, a similar material to like the windowsill. The reason is because I wanted to keep a, a consistent color uh, theme going on. So uh, with interiors, generally there's three colors. Um, a primary color, a secondary color, and a, a, like a minor accent type of color. It's, it's how interiors tend to look beautiful. There's a whole lot of theory behind that. But um, yeah, in this case, I think I'm going for a more like a brown, gray, and white type of interior look. So that's why I chose those existing materials. So here I'm just simply finding wine glasses I'm adding them to the shelf and again we can see that black color so here is where i add that ray trace transmission setting so duplicate a few times go into the material settings and there we have ray trace transmission just tick that and the glass should look like glass so i duplicated that a few times put it in, in the shelf to make it look more filled up i added a plate just a simple plate nothing overly ancient or fancy but i just decided to decided to add it in the shelf to show off even though it's just a simple plate that you could buy from grocery stores and yeah we can start to see the scene come to life now so at this point i gave my scene a render and it looked like this amazing so now time to finish it off by compositing the image so i went into the compositor I added a lens distortion to add a bit of chromatic aberration and distortion. I then went ahead and adjusted the color balance to give it a bit of a mood, like you see in those magazines. So I went for a bit of a warm-ish type look. Um, and yeah, I, that's pretty much all I did to get the final render. Let me know if you want more tutorials like this in the comments below, and please like, share, subscribe and all that stuff. Thanks for watching.